Oh, really? Yeah, congratulations. Have you got a wreath? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. May I make welcome the family relations of the crew who have travelled many miles to get here and uh, you've come from far and near so you, whoever you are, I haven't met any yet, but you're very welcome. And it gives me great pleasure now to introduce Stuart Knowles whose idea, all this that you can see, is his. We're here because as Terry says on the 15th of April 1945 an Avril Lancaster took off from Santoft which is about six miles over there, on a navigation and bombing exercise. It was a nice day, it was daylight, there was no significant wind or weather. It should have been a completely straightforward uh, trip. In, in the 20 minutes from taking off, it turned over Ghoul and Scunthorpe, by which time it would have been up at 10,000 feet, which was the briefed altitude. And then between Scunthorpe and here, something totally unexpected happened because its next scene flying low at about a thousand feet over Oston Ferry at high speed. And as it gets overhead here, it pitches down into a sudden dive and people realise that it's breaking up in the air. The first pieces of wreckage are found a mile and a quarter back towards uh, Oston Ferry, right on the very edge of the village. And as it got overhead, it broke up completely while still in the air. And where we're standing now would have been in the centre of a huge debris field with the uh, sections of the wing and all of the tail plane and rudders. And the main body and the four engines went into the riverbank 150 yards behind where we're standing. Sadly no one escaped. So whatever it was overtook the crew so quickly uh, they just didn't have time. Fast forward then to 2017 and, and just a chance conversation a friend of mine pointed out knowing of my interest in such things and he said oh yeah that's where that Lancaster crashed just in the riverbank over there and I came back the following day and I walked up and down this riverbank and there's no sign that such an event ever happened there's no depression in the ground there's no gap in the hedge there's no broken trees there's just nothing to say that, that it ever occurred and that didn't seem right to, to me if I'm honest it's uh, a significant event in our local history and obviously a huge event for the eight families involved. So I started to say to people, what do you think, what do you think? And fairly quickly, uh, six other people came forward and said, yes, let's do it. Let's, I'll help you. And that made all the difference. And then we seven started to spread the word even further. And I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it was pushing against an open door. Because everywhere we went, people said yes. They gave us money, they gave us goods and services, they gave their time, and it built what you see today. And this is the very definition of a community project. It was, it's funded by the community, it's built by people in this community, and it belongs to this community always. And I'll close by saying... There is a saying somewhere that says uh, no one truly dies while other people speak their name. And I hope that uh, this memorial will be here so in future people will always know what happened here and know the eight people involved. Thank you very much. I'll now call
call upon our esteemed guests from the uh, Royal Air Force and the Royal Australian Air Force to uncover the stone and perhaps say a few words. Gentlemen. So, in the words of um, what was spoken about the incident itself, I'd like to honour the crews themselves with their actual names and excuse me by reading from a list. Um, one of which was our, one of our own Flight Sergeant John Williamson. He was from Sydney, Australia. Others, uh, Flying Officer Edward Pass, Sergeants Robert Cook, Sergeant Sydney Kingdon, Sergeant Edward Martin, Flying Officer Bertram Savage, Pilot Howard Speed, and Flight Engineer Raymond Ollerton. The ages of the crew was from 19 to 29, and like so many before them, fell in those early years so cruelly. One of the cruelest aspects of this particular flight, it was only 23 days away from VE Day, where the end of World War II was proclaimed. The loss and senselessness of such an accident would not have gone missing from anyone, in particular to the family and crew of uh, 565. The amount of loss that was felt with this crew and throughout Bomber Command was unrelenting. In the ratios, of the 55,000 crew that uh, that lost their lives, out of every 100, 55 would would lose their life. Two or three would have uh, be shot down with injuries and escape. 27 would survive, and 12 would be some wounded and prisoners of war. These numbers are truly harrowing numbers and something that is not lost upon me or amongst all the people here because you've all lived through that and we're lucky to be here to uh, be an event like today because that just gives us more of a sense of um, the meaning and the, the community feel for such a project. In terms of the Commonwealth response, um, Australia's effort, we out of 7 million people had a million people that served men and women, and half of those were deployed overseas. <coughs> the numbers are on the honour board uh, for Bomber Command, and the biggest contributor was obviously the Royal Air Force, with almost, well, over 39,000 crew who had lost their lives. Next was the uh, Canadian Air Force, with uh, 15, 15,000 and then the Australian contingent was 4,000, over 4,000, and for the, our Kiwi friends, uh, over 2,000. Pretty sobering sort of numbers. We have recently been, luckily in the last three weeks, uh, hosted numerous veterans events, which has seen members of the former Bomber Command, Fighter Command, or Coastal Command. These veterans have mixed with today's modern Royal Air Force uh, members, aged between 121 years old. I stood back on these and watched from afar as they've mingled. The older veterans becoming younger, talking about their exploits in 1945 and the Second World War with the younger members of today's Royal Air Force. What really gave me a lot of pleasure was they all molded into one. One passion amongst them all being Her Majesty's Royal Air Force. Her Arjua Ad Astra. Thank you very much. Enjoy your morning. I was driving past and 
I noticed a plaque that had appeared. So I stopped the car, got out and looked at the plaque and I found the name of a ten-year-old girl on the plaque. A girl called Tia. So we searched to find Tia and eventually we did and it's my pleasure to welcome Tia here today. She's going to speak with her grandma who I believe helped her with the plaque as well and they're going to read a poem written by Joshua Dyer 14 year old boy who was asked to write some kind of memorial in 2019 and he went away and half an hour later he came back with a poem some of you may have read that poem the one that Tia and her grandma are going to read it's called 1000 men walking 1,000 men are walking, walking side by side, singing songs from home, the spirit as they guide. They walk towards the light, my lord, they walk towards the sun. They smoke and laugh and smile together, no foes to outrun. These men live on forever in the hearts of those they saved, a nation truly grateful for the path of peace they praved. They march as friends and comrades, but they do not march for war. Step closer to salvation, a tranquil, steady core. The meadows lit with golden beams, a beacon for the brave. The emerald grass untrampled, a reward for what they gave. The dream of those they left behind, and know they dream of them. For fun in those poppy fields. They walk 1,000 men. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Uh, Pat Went, daughter of Flying Officer Bertram Arthur Savage. The family of Flight Sergeant Jack Hamilton. Even though he was gone long before some of the family were born, they knew him through their grandmother, and he always loved, it was always loved and missed. He had two nephews, James and Jay, that were both in the Royal Australian Air Force and served in Vietnam. A great nephew who is a pilot and a great great nephew who joined the army. So he sort of left a legacy with the family. And also James Cars, son of Flying Officer Edward Boone Cars, and Jennifer Carter, daughter of Sergeant Edward Edwin Horace John Martin. So let us pray. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict, and ask that God may give us peace. For the service men and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. And we bless this memorial today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are ever the source of life and hope. Amen.
when you go home, tell them of us and say, for their tomorrow we gave our today. Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all your peoples in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world with peace. Be strong and of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.